Hey, it's Ryan here from Lexus of Edmonton to show you this GX460. The exterior color is the Fire Agate Pearl, which is our brown. Very nice to see in person and in the sunlight. The interior color is kind of an ivory whitish color. It's called Ecru. Under the hood on this thing, we've got the V8 engine, 4.6 liters, spitting out about 300 horsepower and about 330 torque all with getting a combined fuel economy of about 12.1 liters per 100 kilometers. The rubber is the Michelin all-season radials and they're on 16 inch rims. The mirrors have the integrated turn signal as well as their power folding, heated and saved with the seat memory. Okay now we're going to move on to the interior. Take a look down here at the uh, the door panel first. We got the seats, the safe seat settings, as well as the power locks and windows. A little bit of space to store stuff down there, as well as room for a, a mug or a water bottle. I'll turn on some of the lights in here so we can play with different things on the interior and see what it's all about. Start over on the left hand side. The power mirrors are located right here with the uh, folding mirror control, that button there. Folds them in, gives you a little extra space to maneuver, as well as the uh, trip control is down there. And uh, to shut off your traction control is a little bit lower. As well as the gas cap release and the hood release gets way down there. If we move on to the left side of the steering wheel, you'll be able to check out the uh, audio controls here, so you don't have to take your hands off the wheel pretty convenient obviously top ones are volume this one will change your uh, CD track or your the channel you're on for the radio the mode button will change will cycle you through the auxiliary satellite AM FM CD player that kind of thing if we move over to the right hand side it's the Bluetooth controls the call answer and hang up as well as the voice commands and this little uh, up and down key here will kind of change this display screen that you've got and show you a little bit a uh, couple different information about the vehicle mostly related to the fuel economy I'm just kind of cycle through them and take a look we'll move on and check out the display screen now so this one is a touch screen in this vehicle and I'll just kind of show you through some of the different screens that you can get to and the different things that you can have control over. Uh, if we look here on the side, you can see these primary buttons that will change what screen you're at. So we'll start with the climate one. I'll just show you a couple of them just to give you an idea of how it works. So now we're on the climate screen and you know you can adjust where the fan's going you can adjust the speed of the fan just by with a touch down here this button is for your heated windshield wipers so if they're frozen you turn that on it'll help them thaw up and get working again we'll check out the audio screen now as you can see there's a list of all the tabs up here that you can get to uh, none of these are plugged in right now so it won't let me go to any of them but those are the options you have, you know, Bluetooth, Auxiliary, USB, um, the AM and FM and satellite, obviously. Also down here, the sound button will let you play with your sound settings a little bit. So bass, mids, and treble, as well as uh, front, rear, and left, and right, where you kind of want the sound to be aimed. And then the DSP will let you kind of play around with the surround sound and the sound levelizer. So convenient little set of options you got to play with here. Now if we move down a little bit lower you can see the driver and passenger temperature controls. One of the buttons here that's worth mentioning is, is this one right here is the uh, rear window defroster as well as the heated mirrors for those cold winter days when they're iced over. CD player is a little bit lower down here and there's some controls for the audio if you don't want to use the screen or if you want to get there faster and the screen's on the nav for instance got those down here if you give that a little tap it hides them away again if we go down a little bit lower we can check out the driver and passenger heated and cooling seat controls as well as underneath this piece here slides back 
And then there's some extra storage space. I believe you can get an ashtray put in there too if you like. The input for the auxiliary or USB audio for your iPod or other music device as well as the power outlet is located right here. If you want that closed up you give it a little tap and it shuts for you. The shift knob has the sport mode with tap shift on it. Over here you have the uh, downhill ascent control I believe that's what that stands for DAC. <laughs> I haven't spent a lot of time around these vehicles but I'm doing the best I can just kinda showing you what I do know. Uh, and then the four-wheel drive high or low four is there as well. Couple cup holders here. If you want them covered up, you got the wood grain trim there. The armrests are adjustable for the driver and passenger side to kind of fit your liking, as well as opens up obviously. And we've got this little piece will pop out. It's got room to hold your coins in there. It'll slide back and forth. And then there's really nothing inside. It's just storage space. All it is down there. We'll look around over at the passenger side. You'll note it's got the lock and glove box. The door controls on this side are limited to the power locks and just the power window for the passenger side. And there is room for a cup holder down there. Same kind of compartment space as was on the driver's side door. Up on top we have the controls for the sunroof. Little holder for sunglasses down here. The sun shades, when you open up the mirror, the light comes on, close it, light goes off. And that's about it for the front end of this GX460. Absolutely gorgeous SUVs. Just give you a minute to kind of take a look around at the interior here and just check out the color. I think the best ones on the market, hands down. This this is what I would drive home. Okay, now we're going to make our way down to the back of the vehicle. So it's not a power trunk, but the trunk release button on the remote just pops open the window, so the top half basically. And you can pull this up and if you just need to toss a couple things in the back here, like groceries, that, that sort of thing, you can just do it through the window if you like. But we'll open up the release here and pull the whole door open just to take a look inside. So you get a lot of storage space back here already, but it's a 40-20-40 split for the rear seats. So they can go down to all of them, one of them, the middle one, the side one, whatever you want. And that gives you a lot of extra room in here. Uh, there's also... I have it out of the way right now, but there would be a cargo cover that would sit right about up here, as well as a, a mat for this back section. So I've moved that stuff out of the way so that I can demo you the third row seating that's hiding underneath these panels here. So the way you control that is through these buttons here. Two little beeps to let you know that it's moving, and then it'll beep again to let you know that it's finished and they're set up properly. And then you pull up the uh, headrests after the fact. So there's not a huge amount of room back here, but at least you have this if you need it. There's also cup holders on either side for the uh, passengers that might be in the back seats here. Once you're putting them away, you have to make sure the headrests are down, so you pull these little tabs here and it'll make them just fall, fall down. And now I'll move around to the, the side, the rear door, so I can just show you some other controls here. There's another set, if I pull this seat back, there's another set of controls for the third row seating down here, as well as this little button on the top is a little bit of a recliner. You don't get a lot of play with it, but at least it's something. And the control for the other seat is on the other side. So I'm going to stash these both away now using these buttons. Pretty cool to watch, actually.
And then just as a final little note about the cargo area, you can see back there that is actually a power outlet like you would find in your house. You don't even need an adapter for it. It's 100 watts. So that's a nice little feature, especially good for those road trips. We all know that. All right, now we're going to take a quick look inside the rear seats. So they recline as well as uh, fold all the way forward. This is to kind of move it forward to get it out of the way for people crawling into the third row seats. And then if you want them to come all the way forward, the lever's right up here to give you a little more space for your cargo. The center armrest comes down like it is already. Push that button, you get a couple cup holders there. If you need the space for another person, folds up like that. The seats uh, also slide forward and back to give your cargo or your passengers more room. Little uh, flaps on the back of the front seats here. And we'll check out here, there's some uh, neat little options with the climate control as well as heated seats for both sides and the rear control. The dome lights up on top there, heating vents on both sides as well as the little hangers. And then pulling back to check out the door panel, got a little bit of storage space and space for a water bottle down there as well as the power window. Okay, now we're going to take a look over at the front end of the vehicle. So I'll just give you a little peek at the headlights and the grill. Now I already, I already pre-popped the hood so we can take a peek inside the engine. Very nice and clean little design here. Lexus has uh, these kind of panels that are held in place by these little plastic rivets just to kind of make things look cleaner and keep dust and dirt out of the engine compartment. So it's a V8, 4.6 liter, about 300 horsepower, about 330 torque, it's a very mean engine. The fuel economy is a combined about 12.1 liters per 100 kilometers, so you're getting pretty decent mileage on a, on a vehicle of this size and kind of power. So, don't have much more to show you about this one. As I said earlier, I haven't spent as much time around these vehicles. You can expect these demos to get much better in the future. But uh, thanks for watching. I'm Ryan from Lexus of Edmonton. Talk to you soon.